Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. And thanks to everybody out there who always follows the show. You guys have been writing a lot lately. It lets me know more than ever that everything that I know I'm experiencing out there on a healing, holistic level where people are at the planet, what people are rising up and willing to do to assist themselves is possible. And how as a planet, we're going to be coming together more and even more like this is really a jumping point. And so every time I hear from one of you, it just for me confirms and affirms that this is indeed what's happening. And by the way, I love your feedback. I love your questions. And thank you and bless you. If you want to continue to subscribe to the show, which of course I recommend you do each new show with each new amazing guest comes right into your box so why not have a lot of ease there go to youtube.com slash debbie dashinger also spreaker stitcher apple google podcasts I'm on about 20 to 50 different sites, to be honest. So for me to even download this is a big deal. We were just accepted into Pandora. So go there, subscribe, and please leave a review because every time you do that, somebody else who needs to find this conversation, who's hungry for this conversation, will find it because you took one minute to leave a five-star review. And so thank you in advance. Also, the show has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards. Deeply grateful for that as well. And the show is sponsored by Dr. Dane Heer, H-E-E-R, and Access Consciousness. They do energy healing work out in the world. And if you're interested in their classes or to become a facilitator, products, or workshops, go to drdaneheer.com and also accessconsciousness.com. I have a really exciting conversation today, and it goes right back to how I started the show, which is... It's time, and we're all feeling it's time. I know a lot of us are also seeing this cray cray out there, it's total craziness going on, but you know what? It actually causes us to want to be the illumination even more. For, so, for everybody's hearing the call and fear, feeling the call, it's exciting. There are many ways to get there, but I've always been a firm believer in getting there like that because why not, right? Energy is everything, and change can be now. To that end, I literally just returned home from Costa Rica from an amazingly glorious trip to a place called Rhythmia. And if you haven't heard about it, that's what we're gonna be talking about in today's show with one of the co-owners, co-founders, Brandy. And it could not be more perfect timing. Brandy and I were actually supposed to have this conversation before I left. I'm deeply grateful to the universe for orchestrating this that it's now, because I'm coming back with so much experience and also non-experience reintegrating back into the world. And I want to ask her all about that because she is way more experienced doing what she does and can help show us the way. There's not a lot of information out there in the aftercare and the reintegration once people leave plant medicine and ayahuasca and doing big time journeys. And I did four of them back to back while I was at Rhythmia. Incredibly assisted, one of the most beautiful resorts, one of the most stellar experiences. Highly, highly recommended. I'll be giving out the links so you can go to and just know that I and my partner are putting together a trip to go back. I'm already going back. So what if you could explore your highest potential with sacred plant medicine? What if you could? My guest today is Brandy Sabella. She's a service-driven entrepreneur, activist, women's empowerment leader, and transformation entertainment artist. Brandy is the co-creator of Rhythmia Life Advancement Center in Costa Rica, a leading retreat center that infuses ancient and modern wisdom, plant medicine, and breakthrough technologies for a healing and awakening to one's highest potential. Rhythmia is the largest medically licensed facil facility in the world. And I just gotta say, it offers ayahuasca plant medicine. And when you say medically licensed facility, that was my hell yeah right there. I wanted to be held while I was doing this. And if that is of import to you too, this is why. They've got everything set up for your success. Together with Randy's partners, including Gerard Powell, Michael Beckwith, and Foster and Kimberly Gamble. Rhythmia has helped thousands of people, including me, experience life-changing miracles. Brandy also founded Majesty, a modern-day mystery school for women that facilitates retreats at sacred sites around the world. I'm going to give this link out several times, but for those of you who already know, 
<laughs> you're interested and you're in and, and give me more, give me more. It's Rhythmia, R-Y-T-H-M-I-A dot link slash Dashinger, D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R. So Rhythmia dot link slash my last name, Dashinger. Brandy, welcome to Dare to Dream. It's great to have you. So good to talk to you, Debbie. I can't wait to hear about your trip to Rhythmia. It's so <laughs> cool that we're going to have this conversation over a podcast. And I love, my favorite part about um, talking about plant medicine is talking about how to sustain your healing after you had your big, aha, uh -huh, amazing healing um, experience. How do you actually bring that into the world and how do you sustain it and keep it? So um, a lot of people are finding plant medicine right now thank god it's a time where we need everybody to wake up we don't have time for you to uh go through a process that takes 20 years <laughs> so plant medicine's an amazing catalyst but it's super important to understand um you know how this medicine works and also to understand that it's not a magic pill it's not something that you're going to just take and then all of a sudden you're enlightened or <laughs> or uh all of a sudden everything in your life that you're wishing for it's not like a uh a genie in a bottle that you get to just make a wish and it just happens you still have to do the work nothing intervenes with your free will mm -hmm. and um so i'm really excited to talk about how people can use plant medicine to actually get what they want in their lives to manifest what they want love healthy relationships healing whatever it is, but half of the work happens on the medicine and half of it happens when you get back home. Yeah, I can feel the truth of that already, without a doubt. I want to start, so people who maybe know it, don't know plant medicine, certainly are interested, and I agree with you, it is the conversation. Why does Rhythmia in specific do four back-to-back -back ceremonies, and each uses a different medicine, a different shaman, and I know everybody's a choice. Someone can elect to not be part at all of the ceremonies and do the other amazing things that go on there, like breath work and yoga and the spa and so forth. For those of us who go for the full Monty, we want the total experience. Why is it back to back for? Why different shamans? Why different medicines? And why the big kahuna? Certainly for me, the last one was with the shaman Leo, and it was Yahe. And I just want to say between you, me, and the wall and the cup, I did four, three cups of Yahe. So wh what's that all about? What's the purpose? So Rhythmia has uh, unfolded. We started building it about seven years ago. And our tradition is very unique. It's the only one. We're the only ones doing it the way that we do it in the world. But it happened organically, and it happened over time, and it happened uh, through guidance directly of the plant medicine. And also, we've had almost 7,000 people go through our program. So um, we've had the most people go through our program in the history of plant medicine ever on Earth. Uh, you know, there has been no center that has had this many people go through it. And um, the way that we do it, we've really created our own tradition. And it was built around, first of all, having the um, highest level of integrity of our shamans, number one, which is super important because when we created Rhythmia, um, you know, ayahuasca was still really underground. Mm. And, um, you know, there's, there's hundreds of ceremonies happening in Los Angeles uh, every single night. And as it's getting more popular, more and more people are calling themselves shamans. And you can imagine seven years ago, it was still very underground. Now it's exploding. And I'm watching people calling themselves shamans who have not done trainings. Um, I'm hearing about stories about, especially women, going to other countries, going into the jungle and being ripped off, taken advantage of, raped, you know. And um, I hear horror stories of people who did plant medicine with someone calling themselves a shaman who doesn't understand spirits and the spiritual realms and all of the other things that are happening that you can't see with your eyes that takes so much training. Um, you know, our, the grandfather who passed away, who was the head of the lineage of, uh, of the, the trainings that our shamans have gone through at Rhythmia, who's 110 years old, he said, you begin 
to learn the medicine after 50 years. So for us, it's really important that we first of all have shamans that were in the highest integrity that have, you know, even if you go through training, you might not be called to be a shaman. You might not naturally have the gift. It might not be your calling. So to find people that have the calling, that have the gift and who have had the training is pretty rare. And so our whole program, the back-to-back -back four nights, first of all, it started with finding the right people. And that took time and years and going through the wrong people to get to the right people. And we have a very, very beautiful, solid team who's been trained by, um, by the lineage in Colombia, um, mm -hmm. as well as they all come from different backgrounds and lineages. And actually, I think it's really beautiful because a lot of people who come to Rhythmia, um, a lot of times it's that they're beginning on the medicine path. Mm -hmm. And so it's pretty cool to be able to try different traditions around the medicine and to get to experience these different ways. Like, so we have you know, a night with uh, the Shipibo shamans and you get to experience medicine with the Shipibo traditions. And then you have another night where it's the Colombian tradition and another night where it's all women, um, mm -hmm. the women's ceremony and the divine feminine healing. And so what we found was um, the medicine guided us first to the right shamans and then um, they gave us the order of each night. And not everybody has to show up to all four of those nights. They're available because each person is so unique. Mm. Each person has such a unique situation. There is no one size fits all to any person. And that's why Rhythmia is very, um, we create structure, but we also create a lot of flexibility um, within the structure. Whoops, can you see me? Yes. Sorry. Um, but we create a lot of flexibility within the structure so that you could come, set your intention, and then listen to what your unique you know situation is and where you feel called to the medicine and when you need to show up and so it's important that the medicine is available on each of those nights you might come and it might just be one night and you get everything you needed in that one night or you might have work to do and you might need to show up every one of those nights but each person mm -hmm. has it available to get the healing that they came for that week yeah and i think it's important to note too that even within the structure you're talking about that that same medicine becomes disseminated inside of each person and the experience is uniquely different. Our own blueprint interacts with the medicine herself and it mm -hmm. creates this experience that is a journey that was mine, that was not the next person's, not the next person's. Just the fact that I did three cups of yahe the last night people were blown away, right? Like, how did you do that? But honestly, I just, <laughs> I was in a panic attack before I started. So it's, it's even more hilarious that it ended up that way. But I trusted energy. I trusted what was happening. And, and when I heard a yes, I, you know, I was like, okay, here we go. Yeah. And everybody's different. Some people will, are more sensitive and require one cup. Some require it just depends on the person. So it's great that you listened and that you showed up for what you were called to do. <laughs> and so once we are having this unique experience, what is the best way? And especially you, you're a perfect person to ask this of since you've done journeys. Let me know how many plant medicine ceremonies you've been through and how did you surrender? What do you recommend for the surrendering and what do you recommend for best connecting with what's happening to us or being shown to us? Well, I lost count. <laughs> um, I worked with it so much and I, and also on the facilitation side to really understand all aspects of it, to be able to help with guiding and understanding what we were creating. I had to go very deep with it. Um, and that is not the journey for everybody, you know, and some people think that, the more that you do, the more healing that you get, the more awake you are. And it's not true because I've seen so many people um, come in and they're on this quest to get numbers under their belt. It's very like linear Western, you know, masculine thinking. <laughs> and um, it's not necessarily more is more in this case. It's, it's how you actually integrate and how you work those experiences and so um you know i've watched somebody 
do hundreds of them and still have the same issue huh. that they started with. And that is because they're really not taking the blessing and the healing and bringing it into the world and working that muscle. So the medicine will first give you a healing um, and it's clearing mind, body, spirit, emotional body. Um, which is amazing because 90% of our reality is created from our subconscious mind. So we could have things that we want or we don't want in our life, but our subconscious is what's recreating it all. Something that we maybe don't even remember from our childhood is recreating these situations over and over. The same relationship, the, you know, the same situation financially. Um, and you know, it's difficult when you're going through talk therapy or different programs where you're trying to go through your brain and figure out what is this mess and how do I change it? What's beautiful about the plant medicine is it's healing all aspects of ourselves and it's getting to the subconscious mind and it's reprogramming neuro pathways. And so we can actually um, have a clean slate. We can have a healing and we can have the space to actually now step into the real world and create what we really want. So the difference between somebody who might have to keep coming back. Yeah, it looks like her, her uh, camera froze up there. So I'm just going to fill in a little blank while we get her back. Um, I've got a science quote here from uh, Kate. Sorry, sorry, you froze up there for a minute. No, no, no worries. But I'm the just going to finish are... this quote oh. here that uh, there's a science article from kaphi.com, and it says that ayahuasca triggers neuroplasticity or the brain's ability to adapt and transform. And the mm -hmm. article leaves us with ayahuasca drinkers typically draw upon the spiritual traditions to guide their visionary journeys, neuroscientific research suggests that ayahuasca may be able to relieve trauma and deep and heal deep emotional wounds. Mm -hmm. I know we found that to be true. It's so true. And so that other 50% is on you and it happens mm -hmm. in the real world. So it's just like if, if your slate was cleaned and you received a healing now to, re to actually create the new um, neuro pathways, new habits, new patterns, it's like you've got to go to the gym and you've got to lift weights. And so what you, life is going to then become your ayahuasca journey. Life's going to start showing you all of these different situations are going to show up. And so a lot of times people think, oh, uh, I'm going to walk into life and I just took the magic pill and it's going to be all blissed out. And it's actually usually the opposite. <laughs> usually, what, <laughs> usually what happens is life's going to be like, oh yeah, you've got your healing. Okay, let's reinforce this. So now we're going to throw some situations your way and it's going to give you the opportunity to flex your new muscle so that you can reinforce this new behavior and this is how you sustain your healing and this is the difference of people that can come one time and have a complete game-changing experience and somebody who's come 200 times and has the same thing showing up in their life over and over tell me about your journey so what happened for you and then how did you sustain and really stay in the flow of change and altering your reality up to where we are right now together? Mm, um, for me, it's just been a constant growth. Like, <laughs> you know, I really learned that there's never, you know, when I first started with the medicine, I thought that there was this point where you just like get it all or you finally arrived. And I realized that that is never going to happen because you're always going to be growing more, expanding more, um, becoming more of who you truly are until the day that you die. And it's a question of how far down the rabbit hole you want to go in yourself. And so for me, I'm pretty fierce with it. Like <laughs> I'm never satisfied with just, um, you know, being comfortable. I always, I love pushing myself and pushing what does fierce mean to you like as far as actions what does that look like fierce, out in the world fierce is drinking some damn ayahuasca <laughs> <laughs> so every time i do a ceremony no matter how many i've done i'm always like what the hell are we doing <laughs> <laughs> that's fierce <laughs> i totally get it every time you're like what the hell are we doing and 
and you go through this night and it could be crazy and it could be blissed out or it might be torture, but whatever the hell you went through, it brings you closer to who you truly are. It brings you freedom. So for me, whatever the gamble is, rolling the dice, it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. And to me, that's fierce. That is a, a fierce way to approach uh, transformation because I don't want to, I don't want to wait until I'm 80 years old, a uh, hundred years old on my deathbed and look back and regret anything about my life. I don't want to look back and be like, Oh, I could have done this more. Or I, I wish I would have uh, had the courage to try this or, you know, um, no, it's like I, there, ayahuasca is amazing because it gives us this ability to lift the veil and to talk to our soul. Mm. And we're so disconnected from our souls, mm. um, from nature, because of this Western society, because we're so bombarded with toxins and frequencies and cell phones. And all of these things have really disconnected us from, from hearing our inner voice. And so for me, to be able to have these, these opportunities to speak to my soul and to hear what's next for my growth is key. And it's, it's, I love it. And I'm so blessed that we, that it's here, especially right now on this planet and it's awakening people at, at lightning speed. Yes. How do you know the difference when you're having that consult or conversation, that connection, how do you know that's my soul or how do you know that's the all that is, or how do you know that's grandmother medicine, et cetera? Can you delineate? You can't, I, I would say, you know, it's tricky because the more that you get to know yourself and the more that you get to know what the ego sounds like and what your soul sounds like, you mm -hmm. can differentiate, you know, um, the ego is usually is in a rush and there's fear involved and there's, um, you know, there's, there's linear stories involved and the soul is really, when you hear truth, you know how it just kind of lands and it's mm -hmm. so simple. And you don't even have to like get all, it's not so confusing, <laughs> you know, like when you hear like the words of the Buddha and the great spiritual masters, Yogananda, who were awakened and you hear the words that come out of their mouth, it just lands and it resonates and you know, it's the mm -hmm. truth. And so I feel like that's the same thing that happens when you're speaking with your soul. It's just something that, that hits your heart and you know that it's true. Um, but there is no real way to be like, okay, this is my ego speaking to me. This is my soul. The medicine's tricky too, because it's like, there's so many different aspects of it. And it's also speaking to us in metaphors. Sometimes people take things literally mm -hmm. that are actually um, a metaphor. It's just like dream interpreting sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can't take everything at, um, at face value. Sometimes you've got to like decipher what the message is and um and a lot of times it's not even a, a message that's coming through your mind sometimes it's an energetic truth that hits you or an energetic release that happens and so much more of truth happens energetically um rather than through words anyway what of all the things you have been guided by the plant by the wisdom by your soul that was given to you for you to execute or become or be, what was the most difficult one that you agreed or surrendered to that you've done to fulfill your particular destiny? I think a big one is always loving myself. It's a practice. It's, you know, I would go to the medicine, I'd return to myself as a child and you know, I would do all this work and years into doing so much work, I would still find these places where I didn't feel enough. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel worthy. I still didn't have self-love. I still had things that I was judging about myself, shaming myself for, blaming myself for. And I was like, well, God, when am I ever going to just be done with this? How does this keep coming up? And, you know, um, I realized it's a journey like everything else to love yourself again, because we've been um, so programmed by the matrix, we've had millions of imprints bombard us from society, from our family, from our education system, whatever it is. And we can't expect that overnight, uh, it's just going to unprogram like that. And you're like, ah, I love myself totally and completely. You know, it's like, for me, that's been one of the, one of the things that I just have to consistently work at is just 
remembering that I'm a child and the times where I start judging, shaming, blaming myself um, to basically reparent myself and to step back and say, wait a second, who is that voice? Where did that voice come from? Uh, no, I'm going to override that voice as the adult parent to that inner child. I'm going to start saying loving things and actually speaking the truth to that voice until I start rewiring neural pathways until that becomes the new voice that's speaking to me. Hmm. Well, this is Dare to Dream. I feature successful, fascinating leaders who have created pretty major goals. What would you do if you knew you could not fail? What would it take for you to feel completely free and bold? You can be part of the Dare to Dream podcast team. This is the number one transformation conversation available today. And you can help the show by donating a dollar or more, price of a cup of coffee. You will make a difference for this show. Go to patreon.com slash dare to dream because you have a big purpose to fulfill and we're here to support you in creating that. Patreon.com slash dare to dream is about supporting these conversations that show you better ways to live life and create your dreams into your reality. And if you're just tuning in after we've started, this is Debbie Dashinger, 12 years on radio and podcast for Dare to Dream. I'm interviewing Brandy Sabella, who co-founded Rhythmia and co-produced the movie, The Reality of Truth, about accessing true reality through plant medicine, ayahuasca, and meditation. If you would like to know more about Rhythmia or reserve a trip for yourself, go to rhythmia.com. I guess it's actually rhythmia.link slash dashinger. Easy enough. Rhythmia.link slash dashinger. So Brandy, I want to go into the subject du jour here. And I am literally back from Rhythmia this past Saturday. I am in major reintegration. And let's start with some of the things I'm experiencing because I would love to hear your feedback. I will say one of the outstanding things that I'm experiencing right now is I've woken up the past couple of nights and been confused. I don't want anyone to be alarmed because it's not about that, but I have been confused because I wasn't where I thought I was. I thought I was in Costa Rica. I thought I was in that bed in the Malacca, mm -hmm. Malacca again, and I thought I was deep into the medicine. And so there was a lot of moaning going on for me when I woke up. And then figuring out kind of concurrently, well, I'm here, but I think I'm there. And, you know, finding my way to the restroom and stumbling back and going back to sleep. So that's one thing that's been really wild to wake up to find myself in a different reality. Thoughts? Um, well, I think it just really depends um, on the person. Sometimes you open yourself up um, to, you know, higher frequencies. And in those frequencies, dream worlds and locations, time, everything can start to get blurred. Mm. And so, um, you know, I would say just pay attention to it. And, uh, you never know what direction it could go. But um, it sounds to me like you've opened yourself up and, um, you know, there's, there's lots of benefits to that opening as well because your dreams might become more vivid or lucid or... Um, you know, as you're going through reality, you could start to feel like you're in a dream, which we are all in a dream, <laughs> you know? So it's actually awakening to what's real. Um, so sometimes adjusting to that new way could be like, whoa, what's going on here? You could feel more connected to your intuition. Um, so I would just pay attention to it and go with it and uh, don't be worried about it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It, thank you for that. And not worried because it actually is a strangely pleasant experience. I missed, I was so sad to leave. I have to say, oh, it <laughs> felt like I was leaving home and family and it was like phew, difficult to come back to Los Angeles, like, meh, meh, you know, horns everywhere. I'm going, no, yeah. it was so beautiful there. Yeah. One of the other things, um, Gosh, there's so many. So I'll go to this one next. Is oh, that's interesting? The phone that no one's supposed to use because this is a radio line. Mm -hmm. um, sorry about that. No worries. Uh, 
so persistence is the mother of invention. Here we go. One of the things, starting night one, um, and the medicine would not let me go, even though every ceremony, completely different. But this was woven throughout every ceremony, except I was given more information and shown more every night. And by the way, so much more happened besides this, like, whoa. Mm -hmm. Things I was shown that I didn't know about, that I, traumas for me to release, uh, information, wisdom, healings. I mean, wow, what was packed into a night. And the one that I'm speaking to specifically is night one, I was told by the medicine, you are a shaman, you are a priestess, you are a healer. I thought, well, that's super interesting information. The healer part was no big surprise. I'm, I've known for a long time, I'm clairsentient. I know I'm an empath. I know I'm claircognizant. And I use that. I, what I do is I help people write books. I also help people take those books to bestseller guaranteed. And I also teach people how to be visible, how to be interviewed, and how to use radio and podcasts and get scheduled and have a lot of exposure. So I, I knew that I, besides teaching technique and strategy, I also knew that I know what I know about my clients because of what I receive. So that mm -hmm. was not a shock, but the rest of it was like, interesting. So first night I accepted it and I did some bartering. <laughs> Second night, uh, the medicine brought it back up and said, you know, that bartering we did, well, we're going to take that off the table. And we're going to ask you to step into some of these gifts. I, we know you're afraid, but we're going to be here and there's nothing to be afraid of. We're going to help you with all of it. And it just kept increasing by the fourth night where it said, uh, go up to the shaman. Uh, we want you to have a blessing. To, as a shaman. I'm like, oh man, what are you saying? This is really uncomfortable. I think <laughs> this is embarrassing. Like, how do you go up to a, this, look, this guy's like the diggity shaman bomb right here. And I'm so embarrassed. Like, and it kept saying, you know, to do this. So, oh, I went up and said what I said, and they were very gracious and wonderful. And then they told me to go to Sarah and say something else and ask for a different kind of blessing. I'm like, wow, oof, this is big for me. And uh, when I came back, and obviously we're talking 72 hours since I'm back, I've already been online looking at shaman schools, didn't know they existed, but looking at things like this, and uh, priestess initiations, just doing the work, going real slow. I want to speak to a point you made earlier, which is that things could sometimes be interesting or difficult or testing to see how the path you're going to be on. Uh, by night four, I was concurrently healing the room and myself. I was being guided to all this. And anytime I had discomfort, I was being shown things and colors and lights and using my own hands. When I wanted someone to come help me, I was told, no, you, you, you do this. You can do this. And they showed me how. It was so simple. Yeah. And in returning, uh, last night, my boyfriend's dog got hit by a car. Terrible. Awful. I love this dog. Shocking news. And driving to the animal hospital, same thing came up. You know, who can I call? Like, I've got some of the most exquisite healers on the planet in my life. Who can I call for help? And I heard it again. You can do this. And I sat there and I just pulled over the car and did a healing on his dog, Ziggy. And it was so amazing uh, to be willing to receive this, to just surrender to this. And it feels like what you're talking about, like this particular piece of my life right now that's unfolding and is a really big surprise. So can you give any suggestions or thoughts to this? Yeah, um, just keep going with it. You know, we're all, we all have the technology, like our bodies, we are a technology and we all have um, psychic abilities, healing abilities, all of it, some of us have um, in other lifetimes done this, you know, professionally on, on great scale. So in your DNA, you might have a memory and you might, you know, be able to activate something that you've done before and you have a gift or maybe you have a calling to actually do this in this life. Um, so I think it's really great that you're listening to it, that you're following it and then just see where it takes you and never be attached to anything because you never know um, 
if it's going to be, you know, how it's supposed to unfold, but exactly the way that you're listening to the guidance and responding to it is exactly the perfect way to handle it. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, just, you know, I don't have scientific proof of anything. However, I will say that, you know, <laughs> well, you know, for, for a lot of people, data is really important. And, I, and on some level, I get it. I, um, I'll just say, you know, so people know how Ziggy is right now. You know, it's a, it's a miracle because he was really not well. And, and what I That's saw- the dog? The, the dog, Ziggy, yeah. I Can saw see what's cool those. about you? What's cool about you? Um, exercising this this call on a dog is that dogs have absolutely no um, judgment they don't have any beliefs so you know you actually hear stories about animals and children are actually able to heal and receive healing mm. um, easier than adults because we have so many judgments and beliefs and stories and all these things get into our way and actually what how healing occurs is that first the person who's healing you know the more clear that channel is and the more yeah. that person believes that what they're doing is actually working combined with working with someone that actually can receive it and the less stories and judgments that are in between that that process um creates a more profound healing so it's perfect that you were guided mm. to do your first healing on a dog thank you and to be is... able to see the proof of it yes Thank you. That is a beautiful point of view. I really received that. Yes, you're right. And, and for me to have done that also, yeah, I think it was very helpful for me uh, because he was, you know, whisked in for immediate x-ray and uh, triage and internal bleeding and broken bones and all sorts of things. And that's exactly what I saw healing when I did the healing and it came out and they said, no, nope, no internal bleeding, no broken bones, no this, no that. So now we're just dealing with some neurological effects of the trauma. Um, but yeah, that was for me kind of like how, wow, that was just amazing. And the less data, the less science, the less rational brain, mm -hmm. uh, the better when it comes to healing because healing is, is all in the magic realm and magic is the natural state of the universe everything is supernatural and so the more that we step out of the logical rational brain and we go back into the magical child where everything is possible um you know when we go into that side of our ourselves that's where the healing can occur i'm going to read some quotes that i have from various well-known sources about plant medicine just to set the stage here a little bit Chris Killam said, on the other side of the spirit veil, I spend more than a little bit of time researching the hallucinogens. I personally believe ayahuasca is also the greatest natural healing agent, period. And Graham Hancock said, there are all kinds of ways to challenge ourselves. Some people do it by climbing a mountain or scuba diving. The most profound and challenging ordeal is to drink ayahuasca. It is, in a way, the ultimate adventure. Jeremy Narby said, in truth, ayahuasca is the television of the forest. And finally, Pablo Amaringo said, from experience, I came to learn that ayahuasca bestows upon the user knowledge about a variety of topics, not only consciousness and perception, but also leads one to realize that what we perceive is an illusion. Yeah. So aftercare, what is it that you know? I feel like there's so many who will listen to this, and I also want to dedicate this section, if you will, to the Facebook group from Rhythmia, the Lightworkers 172, who came through this past week with me, who are right now on the precipice of what you're going to be talking about. So mm -hmm. what is the ways that you suggest we really deep dive to nurture ourselves at this time so we can be the most successful with the experience we just had? Well... If you're from the Rhythmia group, do the Rhythmia Aftercare program, <laughs> if you can. And for everybody else, um, I would say a practice is the most important aftercare that you can create for yourself. 
um, waking up the same way that you set your ceremony up, the same way that you did it so intentionally, mm -hmm. and you really like had a, a your intention set. Um, you focused on what you wanted out of it. You can start to create each day the same way, and you don't need ayahuasca to do it. Oh, that's you really still, good. I love yeah. that because we want to have it with intention, and you're yeah, and you you start to approach life like a ceremony, mm -hmm. and you turn your life into a ceremony, so that you're not just waiting for your next ayahuasca trip to be your big exciting adventure. <laughs> Every single morning, you could turn your everyday life into an ayahuasca ceremony. That medicine is still living in you. That spirit stays in you. And now it's about how do you turn your life into this magical ceremony? How do you start to live like a child again and rewild yourself? What is going to make you excited today? Uh, what's your intention for the day? Just waking up, even if you have five minutes to meditate, and I know everybody says, oh, it's so hard to meditate. It's hard for me to focus. I, I you know, like uh, I, I have all these thoughts coming in. It's not even about that. It's just by centering yourself and whatever your meditation is, whatever works for you. And it might not be about getting silent, but it's just really going inside and being intentional about what you want to call in for your day. And you set that intention and you're, you'll be amazed at how just doing that tiny little five minutes is, could change your whole day. And, you know, and then it's start creating some beautiful practices into your life, starting with your morning. What are some things that you could bring in so that you, you start off on the right foot with your morning, um, whatever it is. And is it, you know, making a special drink for yourself? Is it, you know, you don't want to just roll out of bed unintentional you wouldn't do it in a ceremony you wouldn't just roll into ceremony and drink a cup so why step into life that way why roll out of bed and just let happenstance take over your day why not create your day why not become the creator of your day and when the more intentional and the more that you take control of your day as as opposed to just letting circumstances take control um you start to become the creator of what's happening and then you can also look at the things that are coming up and start to pay attention the same way you would in I an ayahuasca ceremony. So the things that you're judging, the problems that you're having, the stories where you feel like a victim, the, the, all of these things are opportunities because the universe is working for you, not against you. And those are always the challenges are actually your blessings. Mm. And those are your opportunities to look at how, you know, basically, just like on the medicine, you start to learn that life is mirroring back what is inside of you. The things that you don't like, it lives in you somewhere. And so the more that you get to examine what's showing up and where that lives inside of me, and you make that change in yourself, as opposed to trying to change everybody outside of you, you could actually start to create this really beautiful uh, life because it starts with what you're creating yourself into. And, you know, it's a difference of uh, once you start working with the medicine, you're actually, you're, you're actually creating who you are. You're going in intentionally and you're, you're rewiring yourself, you're reparenting yourself. And so you could continue to do this every single day and create a life that you really love. Is there anything in particular we should be aware of on the other side of plant med medicine journeys? Things we should look out for? be curious about, be aware of? Yeah. Um, I think it's really important to um, know who you're going to be doing medicine with, how long, where have they trained, look at the space that you're doing medicine in. And, you know, it's really the more that you're in nature, the more that you're in, um, you know, a space where you're not dealing with other energies, you know, I don't suggest doing it like in an apartment building because when you're dealing with medicine and energy, you don't know who lives upstairs, who lives next door, because all of these energies, you weren't able to clean those spaces. You weren't able to sage those spaces and there are no walls, <laughs> you know, so everything is, is all uh, connected. So just be conscious of uh, where you're doing it. I think it's also important to um, look at 
medications. A lot of people don't do that at Rhythmia. We have doctors and everybody is screened and we check all of the different medications. Um, that's something that, that is worrisome when I, when I hear people that are on medications just doing ayahuasca ceremonies. Um, if you're a woman and you're going into a man's ceremony, especially if you're traveling outside of the country, I suggest having people with you, not going alone, and also knowing um, other people who have been to these ceremonies with these same uh, practitioners and knowing what their background is, doing investigative work before to know where their training comes from and how long they've been doing it and what their reviews are. Um, all of this is important. Yeah, this is huge. I really appreciate you sharing that. And this is some of this is information I never heard before. And it's mm -hmm. shocking to me, you know, it's enough that you're handing over your consciousness and awareness to an experience, right? And having faith and trust in that. And it's great that people are that willing. But folks, you know, take good care of yourself. You're the only one you've got this time around. So really important. Uh, and that's exactly why I went to Rhythmia. Because mm -hmm. A, if you go to TripAdvisor, you'll see the most glowing five-star reviews, period. It's also medically licensed. You know, you are held from the moment you're there to the moment this is over. And my sense, I'll just say real quickly, I'm speaking with Brandy Sabella. This is Debbie Dashinger. She works with Rhythmia Medically Licensed Luxury Resort Center and it focuses on spiritual awakening and it facilitates plant medicine journeys. For those of you who are interested in this, I would highly recommend you post. Uh, just let me know that you are interested and uh, I can let you know about the trip we're gonna be putting together. Love to have you come with. And of course we are vetting people just so you know and Rhythmia will vet people too. The link also, if you want to go directly without me and book your own trip, please feel free. It's rhythmia.link slash Dashinger. And I will post that as well. And um, I know Brandy is in Malibu and it looks like she's having a little bit of a time. She'll be back, I'm sure, in just a minute. But she's having a little bit of time. I, I guess I'll speak while we're waiting for her to come back. I just want to tell you that I am amazed of what was released while I was there. I have so many people who have asked me, friends, tell me, tell me, tell me. They've even be so, been so kind to say, well, just give me the highlights because they, they can sense I'm going through a transition and don't want to overburden me. I almost don't know how to put into words what just took place. I do know that the people I went through it with, there's a lot of ease there in sharing information. My beloved who went with me, there's a lot of ease for us to share things. And I rather love that. I rather uh, find a lot of solace there. And I can do my best. But what I want to tell you in a global sense is this is genius. And Brandy was sharing that it was set up with full integrity, that's clear, 100% from the moment you get there, with the metaphys metaphysical classes, with the mud baths, with the spa, with the massages, with the breathwork class, with, oh my God, the yoga was so exquisite. I've done yoga for years. This was probably the best yoga classes I have ever taken. So inspiring. Music choices, the playlist, we all wanted the playlist. And the ceremonies, like I said, everyone was a different shaman. Everyone was a different brew, if you will, and different experience. And if anything came up, there was always somebody there for me to help guide me through the experience. And I found that I found that completely exquisite to be held like that from beginning to end. So uh, I guess my question to you, and welcome back, Brandy. So I was just filling them in a bit on Rhythmia, is this is my sense. You know how like when you go to Disney or Disneyland, you're having a great time, but you know like behind the curtains, there's a lot going on. Like Disney went to great lengths to create and the Imagineers today and all that. They're working hard to give us like a big five-star stellar experience. I felt that way at Rhythmia. As much as I could feel being immersed in it, the integrity, the brilliance, the genius that went into every single element that was so there for our success and our care, wow my sense was just as strong that behind the curtains of what we don't see or know, that there is a machine going on, an ongoing changing machine 
that is completely there for us. Can you talk a little bit about what we don't see or know? His name is Gerard Powell. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. He's a human, he's a human machine. <laughs> and he operates Rhythmia like nobody's business. Like the the love and care and how much he puts into it and how much he cares about every single person who walks through Rhythmia's doors. Yeah. You go and he will be like, having the craziest schedule and if he sees or hears that somebody is going through it he personally will be like sitting there making sure that somebody is getting the care that they need and his love and his um desire for every single person to get what they came for is translated into every little detail into that place um and every employee that works there when you go behind the scenes and you see how much they love working for Rhythmia for the mo most, most, almost everybody. <laughs> and, you know, but, um, but the staff is so, because most of them have had this experience and then to have the feeling every week of watching people go through these awakenings, everyone is just so passionate and you feel it from, the moment you walk into the people at the front desk to the person who's even mowing the lawn to the person who, you know, the shaman to the person who's cooking the food, everybody is putting so much love into it. They don't feel like it's their job. They feel like, you know, it's their service. And so um, I feel like that is the machine that you feel that's happening behind the scenes. That's beautiful. And oh my God, the food. Oh my God, the food. We bought the, the cookbook for sure. <laughs> and we're going to be experimenting. That was the best food maybe ever, ever. <laughs> uh. So where are you at today? Because you've had some pretty major things going on and about to go on. Tell us. Yeah. So for me, um, I've been running like on the business side of Rhythmia for years and getting more into speaking. Um, I'm doing uh, the Rhythmia podcast and Brandy oh. Land podcast. Oh. Yeah. And uh, so that's been really fun. Just sharing the different stories of people after they've come home from Rhythmia and these miraculous stories because part of it happens at Rhythmia, but then to follow up with someone six months later, a year later, and hear what's happened in their lives is really exciting and it's helping to reach other people and bring more people to the medicine. Um, and then, yeah, so for me, it's really been about storytelling, story sharing, and reaching more people and bringing them to this amazing work. And you're about to have a baby. I'm about to have a baby. <laughs> <laughs> How are you feeling? How has the pregnancy been? So amazing. Like uh, I have a 12 year old son. Back in the day when I had him, there wasn't, I didn't have a clue about anything. And so for me to be able to be in this place in my life and be bringing a life into the world it's a whole different experience and it's been beautiful and exciting and super creative and I have tons of energy mm. um, so I love it <laughs> and this is dare to dream Brandy so what are you next dare to dream what are your future dreams and goals Ooh, um, I have a list there's thousands of ideas <laughs> and I have to always like just write them down and and wait for <laughs> timing because I'm a creator and I love creating. Mm. But um, for me, you know, it's all about now taking people who are making an impact in the world through their visions, um, through their projects and bringing them together, bringing them to the medicine to actually help um, support each other and to support each other's visions. So I lead retreats doing this and, um, and then I also work, I have a, a program called Majesty, where we bring women together um, and we go through a program where we go through the story of the masculine and the feminine, mm -hmm. and we release old stories that are no longer serving us to awaken our feminine power. So I'm very passionate about that. And um, I'm always creating content and working on 
uh, some different movies and uh, I'm, a, I'm being interviewed in different exciting documentaries that are coming out right now. So there's always lots of things happening. <laughs> what would you like to say to the listeners here at the end? Hmm. I would say, um, let's uh, wake up. What are you here to do? What is your calling? We're in one of the most exciting times in history, even though it looks like we're in an apocalyptic uh, world right now. This is very exciting times because we've never had so much access to truth, to information, to being connected. And so I am excited about the possibilities of what's happening and what happens when um, just one person wakes up to who they really are and what their calling is because just one person is so powerful. So I'm just excited to be alive right now and I'm excited to, to bring more people to this work and to see more people wake up to who they really are. Mm. Thank you for sharing yourself and your brilliance today on Dare to Dream. Thank you. It's been and fun. <laughs> it's been amazing and perfect. I'm so glad I got to have this time with you today. If yeah. you're still interested in that trip, go to rhythmia.link slash Dashinger. And if you want, post down below. Happy to share more with you or get you on our trip or just to Rhythmia in general. Don't matter how you get there, just matters that you get there. <laughs> so if you fear the call, let me tell you, I was super afraid before I went. I thought I was crazy. Like, what am I doing? But I was called and that was the one thing I trusted. And like Brandy said about going back, I mean, I, even knowing I'm rescheduling a trip going back, I'm like, what? <laughs> but I'm in, man. I took the pill and I'm in. <laughs> so divine, I have to say. I'm going to end the show with this quote from Graham Hancock, which is, all politicians should be required to drink ayahuasca 10 times before taking office. If you're enjoying the show, <laughs> be sure to subscribe. You can also listen to all of last week's interview archives. You'll find Dr. John Demartini there, as well as Ken Honda, who is Japan's best-selling Zen millionaire, who wrote Happy Money. Subscribe to this podcast. It's been a pleasure to be with you today. And remember, the secret of success is always, always having the courage to begin in the first place.